Hello, uh, hello, yeah. Epic Pony. I am ben <laughs> Venomous Pie. You guys know me for a while as the Pinkie Pie of the group. And you can, as you can see from my vector, I am severely excited about this episode. Uh, but I'm not alone in this. We have our Spike, which will be Elite Yoshi. Hello, everybody. Uh, we have our um, Sweetie Belle, which will be Fate Star. And the only cutie mercusator slash female in this call. <laughs> At this point. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we do have uh, Jedi Pal and Daniel called, but he is AFK at the moment. But when he comes back, we will announce his arrival. Let's, let's all talk bad about him behind his back. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, speaking of which, we have our Applejack Mosigo. Howdy, I, uh, it's me, a Morcego. Uh, we also have our Twilight, which will be Shopwit. Greetings and welcome. <laughs> and finally, there's... I, I know uh, Crimson has arrived, but he is currently muted. I'm not sure if he's going to respond. But we do have Crimson in the call, but not sure if he's AFK or not. The sound of silence. Indeed. So, um... We ha also have our Rainbow Dash, which will be Kanata. Okay, every, po every pony, for my life to get my autograph by me, I know I was awesome in this episode. <laughs> 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 well, I... we, all ha we all need an exception, right? <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> I forgot to prepare my bit of water. Hold on. <clears throat> oh. Okay, so, you, you know how this all, you know the deal, we discuss one thing we like about the episode in a random order, and then we go in a reverse order for what we don't like about the episode, and then we'll give our final rating. And the episode we're about to cover today will be Sonic Rainbow, one, one of the most popular episodes of the first season, and, and, the, and, one, and one of the episodes that received the most praise. So, so, um, you know what? Since this is a Rainbow Dash centric episode, <laughs> I think Kanata should go first. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Venom. Okay, the 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 one thing I liked about this episode is Rainbow Dash being a relatable character in this episode. There have been a lot of episodes that Rainbow Dash has been just like bad, as in like her has in how egotistical she can be, like in, like in the mysterious Meduel. But this is one of the few legit good episodes that 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 really shows how flawed Rainbow Dash can be, and in the process of that, it can be turns out to be a really. Re Relatable character, at least in my opinion. It, it reminds me of Fluttershy for me in Hurricane Fluttershy and how f f relatable I was to Fluttershy in that episode. And I was, re and I can relate to Rainbow Dash a lot in this episode. And this was one of the few great Rainbow Dash episodes, in my opinion. Indeed. Oh, uh, speaking of which, um, unfortunately, Violet Bloom is currently on vacation, so she won't be able to show up today or next week. Hey, at least uh, she's going to get some break from all of her home assignment. Exactly. I just want to point that out there. So, Kanata, who do you pass it off to? I pass it off to... Baystar. Okay. Uh, let's see. I like every episode. I love this episode. <laughs> let's see. I guess the main thing about this episode. Let me see which one I like. Um, I'm surprised. The main start to this one is got to be where Rainbow Dash starts. The Sonic Rainbow. <laughs> It's like, oh my god, that was like so epic and so, as Rainbow Dash says, awesome! Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, the Sonic Rainbow itself was a definite highlight. Yes. When it's like, let's see, even when after all when she was trying to get it, but then and towards the end of that one, it's just like, she finally got the Rainbow! <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, it was that, epic. That was <laughs> one of the biggest highlights of season one, no doubt about it. Yes, it was so epic. I just loved the. Mm -hmm. oh. 
Let's see. Um, that's what I like about that. It was the Sonic Rain Boom itself. I mean, it was so epic, so awesome. Bottom line, you gotta love it. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Okay. So, uh, we actually have a arrival here. Uh, say everyone say hello to um. Jedi Pan with Daniel, or, um, I mean, Thunder Sky. What the hell? Kelbunga dudes. Is your, is I your roaring thunders of the sky, Thunder Sky here. Still in for my buddy Jedi Pan with Daniel since, uh, dude couldn't make it. He's got a little bit of a sunburn. Yeah, Princess Sunbutt decided to burn him because, uh, well, of all his talk about Luna being best princess. So, I'm filling in for him today. <laughs> and I am preparing my exorcist kit. So, <laughs> I love the book. We are now co hosting okay, with. Do these kids show up, or is this supposed to be Jedi's twin twin brother or something? I'm getting some of my own vibes from hearing him. Wait, so basically, this is the, the, the Sith Lord version of cartoons? Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, so, well, that's all I can say. So, let's see. Who can I pass it off to? The, 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 I was, let's see. I want to pass it off to, I would say, Applejack. <laughs> all right, Masigo. But before we get started, we do have a uh, late, late ar arrival here. Uh, everyone say hello to our Sunset Shimmer of the group, which will be Crimson Burst Star. Hello everybody, it is your Straw Hat Hero and Knight of Light, Crimson Burst Star, at your service. <laughs> nice intro, I love it. <laughs> well, Alright, uh, All right, so, Bosigo, you're up. I'll try to keep it simple, it's going to be impossible, but I'll try. Um... The, how the little interactions that Rarity did did affect Rainbow and the overall plot. Mm, okay. This is a Rainbow Dash uh, centered episode where it is her struggle. It's not necessarily her lesson to learn. It is her struggle to overcome and Rarity's lesson to... to... You see that Rarity really Ever since she, she was very like generous, you know, with like uh, basically uh, violently, brutally, brutishly uh, forcing uh, Twilight to make her the, the the wing so that they can all cheer for Rainbow Dash. Mm. But that's why she got overcome by her, her own her own fabulousness and was like, "Yeah, I'm a diva with butterfly wings." <laughs> So you like rare you like rarity in the episode. It's what you're trying to say. I, I like basically how how her obvious how initially her her best trait and uh, her in in the end her vanity were were uh, key points for Rainbow Dash to finally believe in herself in in, in, in to do her Sonic Rainbow because well it's tradition if you if you have to save somebody you have the power to do a Sonic Rainbow. Very much. <laughs> so I could be, I could be dead wrong, but it sounds like you're implying that Rarity did all the acted like all this on purpose to help out Rainbow Dash. No, no, no. no. I, I I do legit think that she was actually no. I do legit think this was a coincidence. <laughs> like not that she was doing that on purpose. I do legit think that uh, by coincidence, uh, uh, her vanity in the end. Uh, in a even though it was causing struggle for Rainbow Dash. Her, the, her peril in the end was uh, what saved Rainbow Dash. So basically, yeah, uh, Rarity got to be Icarus and fly too close to the sun, but this time Icarus got a happy ending because it was saved. I can see that. Yeah, that's that's pretty. Oh yeah, and also seeing how uh, Rainbow Dash's love for Clownsdale, not just for her own abilities, but for something else, is also actually pretty good. This would have been the perfect episode to show the crowd still national anthem. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it would. Um, well, but that I have other things, but that's about it. So I'm going to pass off to uh, our Twilight of the group that was in this episode, uh, Sharpwit. 
Thank you. So, because it was already mentioned that um, Rainbow Dash was uh, pretty relatable in this episode, I hope someone will also mention that. But other than this episode, it's actually a little bit of a word. Because uh, this is, pro if I recall correctly, one out of two episodes in season one where we get some other locations than uh, Ponyville and Canterlot and Everfree Forest. Yeah. And pre and to be honest, I think we have a much we know much more about Cloudsdale than we know about the Appalooza. Don't you mean Appalooza? Appalooza. <laughs> nice. Because mm. that's but yeah. Anyway, that's uh, pretty much what I like. Like the and the very fact that we know a little bit about uh, the clouds there is including the uh, weather factory and how this produces the how they are producing the uh, weather in the whole equestria. That was hey, a nice I, touch. Yeah, can I say a yeah. couple of things about can I say a couple of things shop it? Um, sure. F uh, first off first off we have another late arrival. In interesting our starlight glimmer, which would be Neon Blade. <sighs> hey yo guys, what's up? Sorry for being late. <laughs> About time. Hey, do you hey, wanna know why I'm... you're actually Do you know you wanna know why you're late, Neon? Why? Because you're gathering up the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you did get that popcorn? She was he, he was late you. because he just caught so he kept on glaring at my autograph for fifteen minutes before realizing that we had a show to do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> really? I love that. I love that. <laughs> Don't get denied that. my awesomeness. Uh, I'm boy. pouring the bucket of cloud water at now our rainbow dash. <laughs> That's, oh, and, okay. and the Why second not? and the second thing I was gonna say, shop with um, upon looking at Cloudsdale, am I the only one that got like ancient Greece or ancient Rome vibes from that city? You're not yeah, you're not I, not I got vibes from that as well. Like one of the cloud places kind of resembled the, the Colosseum. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was actually good. Good thing to point that out because think about it. We also get the same vibe when we were watching the uh, later episode in the uh, season two. The uh, a heartwarming eve that was. Yeah, well, because the uh, all designs of the ponies and the Pegasus in the uh, past uh, world before oh, a yeah. question you, you are was designed right. by ancient, ancient Greek. Yeah. You know, now that yeah. I'm thinking about it, um, when you think back of the friendship games, the stadium isn't ex actually that modern as well. It seems mm. to be a common theme. Mm. Also, oh, don't you mean Equestria games? Hey, yeah, sorry, my bad. And, that, and that's and that's the, and that's the Coliseum was in the Crystal Empire, not Cloudsdale. Yeah, yeah, but but I'm t I'm talking about the theme of the stadium itself. It isn't oh, okay. exactly I what I'm calling a modern Olympic stadium, so to speak. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Hell, um, you can pretty much see that. Now go on. Expand, expand the, the hell. If you see most of the creatures in MLP. Are, they are usually Greek mythology, hydras, chimeras, even though that chimera is a tiger, not a lion, but whatever. Uh, we have uh, minotaurs, we have all of the all of Greek mythology in this one, griffins. They are from Greek and, and uh, Persian mythology. Manticores that are Persian, but they do happen sometimes in Greece. Uh, mm -hmm. Hell, even the helmets of the... Of the, of the, royal the royal. helmets of, of the guards, they look like... A, uh, the old style of the centurion of the of Roman Empire with a big a bit of the mix of the of the Athenian house. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were yeah. I, I believe I believe that actually Aeon had had make uh, had made a video about the uh, origin of certain creatures of Equestria as well. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, he even did, um, yeah. did about a mythology right there too. Mm -hmm. I so believe I this is also one of the reasons. Why just Scotch really like this show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he had a. The, I remember his review of mis, the, the mystery uh, train, whatever that he got an uh, an urge gasm with Twilight mentioning by June. 
<laughs> yeah, fa- that's the recurring just... theme in his uh, reviews. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. actually it was actually the same with when, with the introduction of um, Iron Will. <laughs> yeah, and, and also <laughs> but, and also one more thing. To... I also remember that joke that the uh, analysis react did for the season six premiere with the uh, the lore of the crystalline. Mm-hmm. And I was like, gee, and oh. so, someone in the corner, Josh Scorcher was fangasming me because we got total Hercules vibes from that artwork on the pots. Honey, <laughs> don't you mean Hercules? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Anyways, we're getting upset here. I'd like here. to make some sweet music with him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have to confuse this. Okay, we're, we're <laughs> getting, <laughs> guys, we think we are getting out of topic a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah. Shop so maybe we should actu- I should actually pass it off. So, I think I'm gonna pass it off to our slacker, which is Neon Blade. Hey, right, Neon, who are you you're calling off. a slacker? Next time, turn on your vault! Hey, at least I'm the one who brought some snacks. <laughs> are, are those Good German point. snacks? Wait until I reach my secret stash of Oreos. Uh, <laughs> Alright, Neon, you're that. up. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, Sonic Rainbow. Well, it's actually pretty hard to pinpoint only one thing which I really like about the episode. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure most of, this, of the things is actually had said in the episode as well. Mm, okay. What? Well, what's your one thing? Well, hmm. If you would really pin me down and force me to pick... I would go with the obvious one with the uh, the conversations between Fluttershy and Rainbow. A the um, the um, shearing scene, and second the I would like to call it the karma scene with the <laughs> rap talk. <laughs> 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 that's, that's actually that's actually two of my favorites of the favorites. If I really have to pin them down. <laughs> By the way, people, we are totally vengeful people. We do love karma. Yeah. Uh, I mean, okay. I mean, admit. I know what oh. I know what scene you're talking about with the karma thing. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think actually Silver pointed it out in the uh, Philip Vanilli review of his. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, sorry for mentioning yeah. that, but no, no, it's fine. <laughs> it's it's okay. <laughs> it's okay because hey, Philip Vanilli was a good episode. Hey, it's fine. Silver Crow is one of the good reviews <laughs> for that episode, so I'm okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so, anyways, anything else? Mm, not really, actually. I really like the vibe of the episode completely, but... Well, that's only the, the p- two positives I uh, really have of the episode. Okay. So, so, now it's a little bit tricky for me to pass it on to someone else. Who can go? Uh, can I point out something before we pass it out to someone? Sure. Who else be- besides Daniel noticed that Bloom is the... In the chat. I noticed. Huh? She's in the chat? Yes, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Violet's in the chat. Oh, hey, Bloomy. <laughs> Violet. Hey, <laughs> so, so, anyways, who do you pass it off to, Neon? Who hadn't go yet? Uh, Elite let's see. and uh, Thunder yep. or something. Alright, so. Thunder Yo- what? Uh, Yoshi, Daniel, and myself. Mm. <laughs> Yo, as I say, and Crim- Crimson was here, but he's off the call right now. I'm uh, thinking he's experiencing connection issues. Um, well, he is online here in Discord, so that's at least a plus. Not for me. But that's beside the point. <laughs> so, who okay, do you pass I, it off I to? Didn't know, I didn't know that you had an identity crisis there, Daniel. <laughs> hey, Venom. Hey, 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 Venom. Yeah. Hey, Venom. You forgot yeah. someone. Me. I, d- I did say Yoshi. No, you, you could always pass it to me and give me a second turn. Uh, <laughs> no. We're not doing no. that. <laughs> yeah, seems you are so awesome that you doesn't need a second <laughs> turn. <laughs> Alright, so who do you pass it off to? <laughs> well, I gotta, I gotta pass it off to, to Yoshi. Alright. To me? Yep. yep. You're okay. okay, thanks, Neon. <laughs> Well, as, well, aside from the Sonic Rainbow being the one of the most, you know, famous parts of this episode, there was another 
there was another part in this episode that everyone seemed to have forgotten. Which would be? Flare Shy's yay scene. I think <laughs> Neon, I think that Neon mentioned that something about that. <laughs> did anyone mention that? Yeah. yeah, Neon did, but that's okay. Oh, alright. I, I think we all know about that, that mm. the opening scenes of this episode, and it's really good. It's, yeah, it's, I did. It's still funny. Yeah, it's, it's still pretty funny to this. Pretty, still pretty funny by today's, mm. by today's standards in the fandom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, if there is one thing that I think that this episode definitely excelled at was the animation. Yes. I mean, True. the rain, the sonic rain yeah, yeah. boom, and then like Rarity's design, Rarity's butterfly wing design. <laughs> yeah, they. I think. Yeah, those. I think, yeah, I adore the animation in this episode. I personally did not like Rarity's wing design. I personally didn't like it. Are you talking about the costume or the I wings themselves? It, the, wings the wings themselves. The wings themselves. I didn't like the hmm. design. Oh, okay, okay. And you know what the I funny thing is about those wings? Mm -hmm. There, There's literally a meme going around saying Rarity was the first alicorn. Not Twilight. Oh, <laughs> I can see oh, that. Jeez. Oh, jeez. Rarity. Rarity. Oh, Rarity. The, the, the priest. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, it's Rarity, the princess of fashion. Yeah. And That's somewhere funny. and somewhere around the world, Josh Scorcher is given given a slow spark on his face. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's like wait, 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 wait. He's not the only one. I am also giving a, a smirk right now. <laughs> okay, so anyways. Anything right, else, Yoshi? So, yeah, no, that's it. Who do I pass it off to? And before you pass it on, can I quickly say something because I realized something? What's that? What? The whole scene with Rarity when the wings started to burn off. That's actually even uh, some sort of Greek um, mythology as well. Yeah, I yeah, mentioned yes. it. Oh, yeah, 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 yes, it is. Because, because the reference is uh, basically Icarus. the story of uh, Icarus. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good thing is, it ended up actually. better than in the original. Mm -hmm. Nah, debatable. Yeah. Alright, so, do I <laughs> Hi, so did you yeah. go yet, Venom? No, I have not. All right, I passed off to you. We will uh, find the set. <laughs> all right, my time is shine. Um, okay, what do I like? Honestly, that is very tricky. Because, uh, first off, all the points have already been said, for the most part. And second of all, it's difficult for me to choose. Because, like a lot of people, I really adore this episode. Uh, it seems like they got almost everything right. So, um... If I had to pick one thing, and um, I know some people are not going to like that, but I did like Rarity's uh, design during the, um, the climax. I actually, wait, wait, I actually... uh, Daniel, uh, no, sorry, uh, not Venom. I have to ask you, do you like it because you think it's pretty, or do you like it on how ridiculous it looks? Uh, I kind of I like the fact that it's bold. Uh, it's kind of like with the... Uh, it kind of reminds me of Corella Deville, you know, something that's both glamorous and hideous at the same time. Hmm. Oh, jeez, that's a good. Whoa. Yeah, that's what a good I'm point. saying, I actually can see it in front of my eyes. Corella Deville. Yeah, I do like I do like Rarity's design because I do like Rarity's uh, design for the costume because of that vibe. So, mm. so, yeah. so, so uh, but that being said. Uh, let's see here. That okay, so, so um, I'm speaking of uh, rarity. I'm gonna pass it off to Daniel, or should I say, um, what's what's his name again? Sorry, I call him Bob. Sky. I call him Lord Betty. <laughs> I call him Bob. What, Can I call him Betty? George? <laughs> All right, thank My name you. is Thunder Sky, dude. All right. All right, oh, Jesus. Just call her and maybe sue and get it over with. <laughs> All right, Can yeah. we move on? We're getting off topic here. Yeah, yeah, you're up, Daniel. <laughs> mm hmm Okay. First up, dude. Dude. Dude, I have to say my favorite thing about this episode was Skittles. I mean, uh, Rainbow Dash. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I get those two mixed up sometimes. <laughs> oh. Dude. Rainbow Dash, taste the rainbow. 
It's spicy. <laughs> no, for fuck's no sake, I've already, I, I was almost cooked in the season three finale. No thanks. It's a, it, this is a kid-friendly version of Rainbow Factory. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> god. I have to bring that one up. Oh. We're, we're getting off topic again. Even I was going to bring yeah, that yeah. up. Can I get back to talking about how why, dude? Yep, go ahead. Alright. So I found her struggle in this episode to be kind of, kind of awesome because it shows owes, owes, it shows that she's not always like how she is in the show. Um, oh, it just shows that she does us show a little bit of fear and stuff, and is not always just like an idiot and stuff. Hmm. I mean, like she. She shows that she shows that she does indeed struggle. Like she was with like trying to be the best. This was one of the reasons, this is one of my favorite Rainbow Dash episodes, man. Just seeing how she's struggling and just seeing how how she was able to put her fear behind her in order to save her friend. That dude is awesome. I have found that to be one of the best parts in the episode. By the way, I want to point something out. Skittles, you lied to me. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> because I've tasted a rainbow and it is so spicy. Would you say it burns, burns, burns? <laughs> Well, it's not Indian curry, so it doesn't count. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe they added a little bit of, of uh, ghost pepper? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, the way oh, God, I hope not. The way we reacted is what might be how we reacted with the ghost pepper. <laughs> well, maybe it is Don't Rainbow give away pepper. the secret ingredient. <laughs> Anyways, um, Crimson, since you're the last person up, why, why don't you go? I'm guessing we're on positives here, right? Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. We're still on positives. Yeah. All right. I might take this out to the sky for a minute, so give me a sec. Okay. All right. What I have to say about the positives, I know how nervous that was. I for understandable wise. Mm -hmm. And let's see. She was doing pretty well before the distraction happened. As for Rarity, I'm not if it sounds like a nitpick or not, doesn't matter. Kind of showing off instead of performing what Rainbow. I, I had. You keep on cutting out, Crimson. Yeah, unfortunately, you are cutting out. I get. I guess the uh, communications through uh, Canada High aren't as potent as it used to be. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, maybe as, I was, maybe... as I was saying, as I was saying about um, Rarity, the way how she was performing, it was Grace and everything else, but what Twilight would have been smart about was the wings. It didn't even take a second thought. Of what... Did you already see a positive, Clemson? Well, oh uh, yeah, about how Rainbow Dash was doing. You mean Rainbow Dash's developments? Yeah, the Rainbow Dash development was pretty good, and I wasn't fully impressed how she pulled off the Sonic Rainbow. With... Okay, so, so but that's uh, but now moving on to what we don't like. Oh, oh. boy, here we go. <laughs> yeah, oh boy. Oh boy, give me. No, oh boy, Jesus! Which in my case would be easier said than done. But uh, Crimson, you're up first. Whenever you're ready. Oh, Dark Crimson or whatever. I yeah. call him Bob. I call him <laughs> Alter Ego Bob. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say that's dark. I'll call you Steven. <laughs> my, my name is Blaze. Okay. 
And no, I and I do have a complaint about that. And that would be uh Rarity is a show off. Yeah, before we actually get moving move forward, I forgot about a little request about this episode. You guys remember what we did during the podcast about the uh, Griffin to Brajov, where we put the Gilda as a separate negative to overall? Yeah, yeah. Can we do the same about Rarity in this episode? No, no, I don't think so. This is like asking us to pick the only thing I that mean, anybody... I, can, um, I mean, I can do it, but I don't know if others can. I, 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 don't, I don't think so. I mean... I mean, some of the flaws in the episode are pretty widespread, so, um, no, we, we can uh, talk about rarity if you want. Alright, I will Did I miss on. anything? Well, it's on negatives so, now. So that means request denied. Okay, okay moving, move on. Alright, so <laughs> let me get back onto the subject of that. Well, um, first things first, our favorite pony that we all know who's the... Big of the brains, she's really not that smart on what she just did. Not smart at all. It would have been wise for her to read the instructions before giving the wings to Rarity, because for one, we kind of knew this was going to happen. Mm. And, and for anyone who didn't see that coming, how come I was the first to notice? I'm surprised, it's a Pink, I'm surprised Pinkie Pie didn't offer to get the wings. Hey, when I saw, hey, when I saw that, that reference that they were making to Icarus, I knew what was going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> I knew that too. Mm. I knew that too. And yeah, but it's basically the question, why didn't Pinkie Pie volunteer to get her wings? She could have turned into a surprise. Yeah, I mean, uh -huh. that, I, mean I thought Pinkie would jump on that in a heartbeat. But if, but I don't think uh, Hasbro has the rights to show that in G4, so I think that was the reason. Mm. Yeah, I was about to say, maybe they... they well, why wouldn't they have the rights? Uh, I, think, I think it's because the rights expired. That is true. Yeah. The all right, I think I'm all out of the negatives for this one, so... You, you, know, this on. you know, you know what's funny, um, Crimson. Yes, you're talking, what is? you're talking about how much you don't like Rarity in the episode when she's up next. <laughs> so, so, Daniel, take it away. Thunder Sky, Lord Betty. Oh, oh We are not getting that far. Up. No, okay, <laughs> just no. Please, can we just get? Can we just keep going before we get off? Yeah. Daniel, your turn. Alright, dude. Uh, my least favorite thing about this episode... Um, well, technically it is Rarity, sadly. <laughs> oh, Ron, I... there. But go on, Yeah. Oops. She did first. At first, she was doing good. She was trying to do it to help boost Rainbow Dash's confidence, but sadly, she just let her ego get the best of her. So basically, she pulled a Rainbow Dash. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I was like, Rarity. Okay. Rainbow Dash is usually the egotistical one, but in this case, it'd be Rarity, and Rarity is usually the most more vulnerable or prone to a stage fright in a sense. I and then we went to Rainbow Dash. They're completely I, swapped. I think they swapped the brains. Like Rainbow Dash, which swapped brains with Fluttershy, and Rainbow and Rarity swapped the brains with Rainbow Dash. <laughs> <laughs> and but for the, and for a moment, and for a moment, Fluttershy swapped with a uh, Pinkie Pie, which was like, "Oh, why are you so afraid? It's, it's just every Pony fan mm. watching you from everywhere, including Celestia." <laughs> Shut up, Mosigo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, it's true. I can feel Sith raging at this it, it is It is partially true, but anyways, do you have anything else to say? Or do you want to move on? Move on. Okay, I'm up next then. Okay, um, first off, I don't think Barry was portrayed badly, because it... 
Her betrayal in this episode does, um, I mean, okay, she started out great, like her generous nature really did show, but then we showcase the opposite of generosity, which is vanity. So it kind of showcased both her, uh, um, attribute, both her tribute as well as her sin. Like, I love how they kind of mixed in together. Yeah, it kind of brought out her best and worst side of herself, both in this episode. Like a three-dimensional character. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh... But, but anyways, I'm getting off topic here. So, okay, so what don't I like about the episode? Honestly, this is basically the only thing I don't like about the episode, but it can come across as a severe nitpick. And that is? Celestia, why didn't you help Rarity? Well, maybe she's too I slow. Think so I, see, I think so. I see it trusted the Wonder Boys or the main or the main six in attendance to help out. But so I see well, knew that they wouldn't let Rody down or anything. So that they knew that they had everything under control. I, can I have my well, 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 guys. I can see, maybe, uh, I can see sorry, that, no. but I can see that, but it does portray Celestia on a negative light. I, on the other hand, gonna ask you guys. Question. Besides that one moment in season four finale, have you ever seen the Alicorn flying like really fast? No. 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 Me. Yeah, never yeah. Gonna, you are never gonna let that go until you've been proven right or wrong. <laughs> I want to be proven wrong. That's the point. Oh, wow. <laughs> what then to be Mary Sue's? He's like, please, please prove to me that you are useful. No, I want to have uh, some discussion. But anyway, fact is that, like I said, this. This question, this fact was actually my entry point to make that video. The fact that we've never seen the Alcon flying like really fast. So, kinda invalid your. Okay, maybe if this is a pretty okay nitpick, but I still think that. Celestia, couldn't you simply catch up with Rarity? Because she was flying for, going too fast. And besides, Wonderbolts were already there, so maybe she didn't want to interrupt them. That's the second yeah, but, possibility. Uh... Yeah, but they're out cold. You know, I do have my own theory, if you'd like to hear. <laughs> about the Alcos or about Celestia in this episode? About, Ce about Celestia in this episode. You know what my theory is? What? She did, she did not care about Rarity. She wants her to die. No, I don't think that's the case. But it, it, did, betray, it did betray a negative light on Celestia. No, no, that, I, that's I, the I, only thing I did not like in the episode, honestly. Uh, uh, Celestia is... wants to be the only one marshmallow pony. <laughs> exactly. I think it would have looked. Now, I think, it, Bell is going I think it would have worked a little better if Celestia was absent. I mean, I know she had to show up. It's a grand event. I get that. But um, uh, Celestia, can you do at least something to help? Then, at least um, to be something. Fair, I was joking. Hmm. An actual theory. I'm Still, going to go with Celestia. Is the element that if you would remove it from the episode, you would you would notice the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I mean, again, she's she's just an overglorified Christmas ornament. I mean, okay, okay. Here's the thing. That's my only negative about the episode, but it's a severe nitpick. So, upon uh, me, upon, upon me, thinks that Celestia like had a vision that this was gonna happen. That's why she and she knew that when that song would that when that was gonna do the Sonic Rain Bloom and save Rarity. Yeah. But which is why this is now a nitpick. It was actually explained. Yeah. Uh, or we could say that, you know, she could see the future and she knew that Rainbow Dash was going to save her, or she was so fabricated at the whole situation she could by not react fast. But by the way, by the way, did you notice that that though that the other three members of the Wonder Bolts didn't try to help Rarity? It's like you saw three of the three of the set Wonder Bolts try to help Rarity. Where were the other three? <gasps> Don't you, like, the, you have to realize that the most Wonder likely Bolts panicking that they're that they're free best. Best numbers got knocked out. Well, hey, 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 hey. They're probably like how Rainbow Dash is now. 
Uh, I do maintain my view that the, the water boats are a bunch of immoral. Can I point groups. out that we are getting off topic? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just waiting how, on this. <laughs> can we can we point out how awesome I am in this episode? No. No. Solid no. Nada, you already have been debated about something anymore. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I'm moving on. So, um, Yoshi, you're up. Okay. So, kind of noticed a bit of a parallel here. And it's probably the reason why Rarity doesn't seem to bother me as much as everybody else in the, you know, so far with uh, everyone's thoughts. Thank you. You uh. see, I kind of noticed that this one scene, this scene in particular, has a bit of a has a bit of a comparison. Like, you know, from when Rainbow did her performance to the point where she rescued Rarity and, and, and activated the brain boom. Yeah. It basically reminds me of that one SpongeBob episode that I hate oral report. Basically the one there's basically this one scene where SpongeBob's like literally afraid of is literally afraid of doing his oral boat report and what happens is that Patrick tries to do, you know, the whole gives him these goggles, which is apparently supposed to help, you know, make the make the uh, the situation funny, so then that way he has an easier time. But something goes horribly wrong, and then you know, once the once the uh, episode comes to its conclusion, he's able to give the oral report. Although the problem here is that the thing here is that 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 was actually done rather poorly. But here, they actually did it pretty well in my eyes. I mean, I honestly think that that theory that who brought up that theory, the one about Rarity acting the way she did on purpose. Uh, was that you? I, was that I, Venom? I, I, no. Oh wait, was, who was that? Kanata? Yes. Yeah, so I, 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 I told I told I told one of them that I said I could be wrong, but it sounded like you th you were thinking that Rarity did all this on purpose. Yeah, and That's you know, I, I would actually think that. She actually did it to help motivate Rainbow, but she could have, at the same time, she also could have had her, her, she could have had her ego, you know, in check as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I suppose that's probably why it doesn't bother me, because I've actually seen, I've actually seen this scenario done before, but in the episode, in the Spongebob episode that I compared this one to, it was done much worse there, so, honestly, it's... This scene is not really much, isn't really terrible at all or anything. Mm. You know so. what I mean? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean remember that's what's in character. Even though I didn't like like it, remember that's what's in character throughout throughout this, this episode. So it's not terrible. Yeah. So at least there's that. At least she stayed in character. At least she didn't do anything that was like outside of her character. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I will comment more on that when it's my turn. But, you know, I guess that there was one nitpick that I did have to bring up, though, with this episode. Maybe it would be Fluttershy. I mean, I know she didn't necessarily intend to make Rainbow scared, but, you know, the thing is, it wasn't necessary. She really didn't help the situation with uh, Rainbow's uh, nervousness. I don't. I don't. I really. I'm. I really gonna hate myself for bringing this up, but don't worry. She'll receive karma in three seasons. Well, well, she did help. Well, she well she did help in a small way when she stood up for Rainbow. That's when the other boys were picking on on her. Or did, or did it in her own Fluttershy way. <laughs> but anyways, uh, you wanna move on, Yoshi? Yep. All right, Neon, you're up. Hmm, it's actually pretty odd for me to find a an, an really bad thing in, in this episode for me, which I didn't like. And truth to be told, the nitpicks I haven't been pulled out of this already. Hmm. Well. Well, I gotta have to sit out, sit out that one. I actually doesn't have anything else I don't like about it. Neon, like uh... About Oh, you want wow. my help for that one? Hmm? You want my help? Here's the deal. Do what I do. Pick the most useless nitpick ever and use it as validation. True. 
is this new tick? Ever. Well, and then well the one with Celestia is already taken, so... Take Welcome. <laughs> Take this with a grain of salt, as you will, guys. Um... <clears throat> Oof. You can, you you can uh, you can just say you can't find anything, and we'll move on from there. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, I I don't I have I have nothing. <laughs> All right, uh, shop what? Oh, <laughs> you have no idea what you brought up. Upon yourself, guys, because I, maybe you can have something negative, but I have a long list to what's negative. Although the two points from this list are already taken because they are obvious, but I have two points on my list that I cannot decide which one which I, which should I brought up. Oh, we're going to stay here all night. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, which is more valid? The, the one that is. Uh, the long term or the one that is another long term? Hmm. Up to you. I already Up have my you. negative ready and it's not ready. Pick your poison. Let me ask you first. Is it the uh, rainbow itself or the um, the Wonderbolts? Uh, either Wonderbolt. or. I hate them. I hate them a lot. Because those are... My two negatives, which I cannot decide which one to do. Don't get me wrong, the the rainbow itself is a pretty neat trick. But, you know what, I'll go with it. But as a guy who digged a, a little bit of a lore and like to do a theory behind it, in my opinion, the whole lore behind the Sonic Rainbow is a one big plot hole, in my opinion. Because, okay, we have this Sonic Rainbow. You know, I don't know if you watched the, um, the uh, Brony Notion video about the Sonic Rainbow. Who owned it? Mm. I, I didn't. Actually. I don't think I, I have. Didn't, I didn't, but I think I know where you're getting at with the whole Sonic Rainbow thing. Problem with the Sonic Rainbow is, if this is the rainbow, if, if that means any... If, any other uni uh, unicorn, Pegasus would do this trick without the uh, rainbow in their main or the code. Would also would it also be the rainbow colored, or is it just the rainbow dash who can do the rainbow colored? But so if but if that's the case, why is it called Sonic Rainbow? Hmm. Uh, I don't know. For in my opinion. This is the very lore behind the Sonic Rainbow is not digged enough. It, in, in my opinion. It is a cool trick, but it is also a giant plot hole, in my opinion. In Spe this speaking episode. of and in the show, yeah. speaking of speaking of the Sonic Rain Boom, how did Rainbow Dash even do the Sonic Rain Boom when she messed up Phase One? When naturally doing it, doesn't she need to do Phase One completely good, to do Phase Two completely good, and then do and then get to then then you can do the Sonic Rain Boom? She messed up phase one and phase two, yet yeah, she was still able to do it. Hey, maybe it's like shadow uh, energy in Mortal Kombat. Well, I think <laughs> I have a per I have the perfect answer for that. Uh, that do would it. be the first two attempts were just routines, like part yeah, of an act. Yes, exactly. Well, the Sonic Rainbow itself is something else entirely, and the reason why the she couldn't do it before, but she did it when she tried to save Rarity, I believe, was because of an adrenaline rush. Mm. I think so also true. that she got the bad so, air so dynamic. The faces, so basically the faces have nothing to do with the Sonic Rainbow. It was just for the competition. Exactly. Exactly. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And also, what I think, um, if we put in perspective that, um, that, Ra that Rainbow was actually able to pull it off as a filly, she actually didn't think the about it as well. Exactly. Because first it was really for the show itself. She knew what was on, on stakes somewhat there. But when she was pulling it off when um, rescuing Rarity, or in, that, in, in the first case was just from the race because she needed the speed, she didn't really think about it. So basically, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like overall irrational emotion is what drives you to go faster than you could possibly go. I, I don't know if that was Seagull or Kanada that pointed out that might be due to the uh, 
a adrenaline rush. That was me. That, that, yeah, that oh, was okay, that. Uh, but that actually might reinforce that because, like Rainbow Dash mentioned in this in the Screen My Chronicles, that that was the first time when she felt so much joy when racing. So mm -hmm. that could also cause her an adrenaline rush. Mm -hmm. In this episode, this adrenaline rush could be caused by the following her friend. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. ca actually kind of reinforced the, this theory. How come she was able to pull off this? Even though, although that theory was uh, shattered later in this series, back in the, I think, uh, Canterlot Wedding, mm -hmm. where she pretty much pulled out this Sonic Rainbow out of her <clears throat> flank. Maybe she did I... so much. Maybe she did so much practice that she's able to master it. Maybe uh, she the was the only explanation I can see right now. Yeah. Maybe, well... she was, maybe she was tripping hard on cocaine, and that's why she got all the adrenaline. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> wow. Um, I, I was about that's to a pretty say pretty valid that. point. Speaking of which, yeah. speaking of which, let's move on. So, Bushido, yeah. you're up. Okay, uh... Before my actual negative, I want to point out that, uh, here's the deal. Uh, I am not too much, uh, just like Venom, an idea. Rarity, uh, going the way she was, it was not a, such a pull-off to me because, well, not only because the reason I already said because of the positives, but because uh, it's like this. Uh, we all knew that Rarity was very vein-centric and a drama uh, queen. So, yeah, she does like to be a diva. Even th The only problem I have with that it's not herself. Is the more of the writing that it made it made her vanity and drama, a drama uh, queen stage like uh, persona seem more like uh, Rainbow Dash's uh, way. So it's more like uh, how it was perceived that uh, it is the problem, not how she acts for me. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, that uh, about the other negative that I could find is, um, you know, I kind of wanted. Rainbow Dash to give those three bullies that sh uh, in the end when they were going to apologize a harder time because I like you guys got off way too uh, too easy. Mm, good point, actually. Good point. Mm -hmm. Just give them, them a lesson or a sermon or anything. For me, it stabbed them in the in the neck. But anyway, um. <laughs> okay, uh, you go full uh, overkill, man. <laughs> all right, all right, Faith, you're up. Okay, let me see what I didn't like about. Well, I had a hard, I had a hard time to, between the one. Either it would be the rarity one, or the three bullies right there. <laughs> so, but mine was lean towards of the bully because they were constantly saying Rainbow Crash so much. I was like, oh come on. Yeah, I mean, thanks, just, you're up. Yeah, just grow. These things should grow up. I mean, come on, constantly you're bullying somebody like, you know, I just I couldn't stand it as much. Ugh. Well, to be yeah. fair, Faith, this is Klaus Dale. Bullying and boasting is their favorite pastime. Yeah, I think that was the um, main main head. It's just like the big pony in Equestria is an asshole. Then <laughs> <laughs> you're still going about that, Mosigo, are you? <laughs> and you know, like I do have something, some valuation after every single episode with a background pony going berserk out of nowhere. Good point. <laughs> it's just like that bullying pursuit uh, group of sayings high school never ends, dude. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I just, I just so one of my bothersome because they were, they were so constantly saying Rainbow Crash. I was like, I feel bad for Rainbow Dash for being picked on by that name. I mean, come on. Oh, wait till season six. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, my. Don't remind. Don't. Exactly. <laughs> Don't. Yeah. <laughs> please, please. So, that's, that's the only nitpick I could say because I just didn't like them because, like, you know, bleh. I know in certain well, ways I get teased, but that's all, like, in the past. But still, it's, like, like ugh, cringy for me. Couldn't stand those. Right. So... Uh, so All going... right, now it's time for the Kanada. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the main Rainbow Dash in the group. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> now, now my negative is not going to be rarity. Even though rarity was not was not fun to watch throughout the second half, at least it was like in character. At least it wasn't you know terrible to where you know she broke out of character or anything. Everything that she did it fitted her character, so I can't get too mad at that. Even though I didn't like it. Mm. My negative is Rainbow Dash bashing on Fluttershy on her cheering when it's more important about being there and supporting her than how loud or how quiet someone cheers, in my opinion. Mm. It, 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 I mean, that's, that's not the only problem I have with Rainbow Dash in this episode. She was, she was a fun character to watch throughout the episode, but that one moment where Rainbow Dash, you know, was, you know, trying to watch your Fluttershy on cheering and everything... I didn't like that because to me that's not important. When if, it's more important to just be there in attendance and just support your best friend. It doesn't matter how loud or how quiet you cheer. As long as you are there, that's what counts at the end of the day. Well, well it's Raymo that we're yeah. talking about. She's the attention seeker. So more so louder that she hears, the better she feels. And, and to be fair, she was not a that much aggressive with her if we compare her and yeah. Well, well, like I said, I mean, yeah. I mean, like I said, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't all for anything. I'm just saying that was like the only problem I had with Wimber Dash, and it's not like she focused on that throughout the entire episode. She brought it up like like two or three times, and then just left it at that. I actually have a theory about that. What? And that would be maybe uh maybe that could be how Wimber Dash. That could be how Rainbow Dash hides the fact that she's nervous. Well, I mean, people be. people have ways yeah, to yeah. people have ways to hide it. In yeah. Rainbow Dash's case, but the more time she boasts, the more you feel that like she's getting nervous. Because that that's basically her self-defense at this point. Or she, or, or this is just that just her way of sucking herself up. Yes, and uh, mm-hmm. and, and I think. Uh, I think episodes like Mysterious Meredwell or Newbie Dash supports my theory. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, I do appreciate the fact that uh, after everything, everybody was fabricated and uh, Fluttershy was like finally being assertive. Yay, you're doing good, yay! <laughs> yeah, that's my, my Fluttershy voice, whatever. <laughs> okay, so it's time, to, it's time for us to give out our ratings. So, uh, uh, Faith... What would you give it? I see. What do I give it? Yeah. Four out of five. All right. A four. Mhm. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Crim- Crimson. What would you give it? Five out of five. All righty. Five out of five. <laughs> Well, I already gave him mine. Is a five out of five with a badass seal of approval. <laughs> yeah, I totally I guess, I that's from language, though, right? Language yeah, reference. The yeah. joke. Yeah. That was supposed to be the joke. <laughs> yep. So five out of five from a seagull. Uh, Shopwit. Four point five out of five. I really like this episode, but there are a lot of problems that I. Could couldn't mention and nobody bothered to mention them. Nobody thought about them. Well, or, or at least some of them. And you we know, all know I... what that is because it's a lingering problem throughout the series. Yeah, we know. Come on! It was the first time when they, they were in the actual spotlight and then and the first time they were in the spotlight, the Wonder Balls are useless. Pretty much. <laughs> well, they've always, they've always, no. said, they've always kind of been useless. You know, but that the was the show. first time I would understand it was... Like, I don't know, third or fourth episode, but first? <laughs> now yeah. I think about it, that you should probably be my negative. I used to bitch all the time about the Rainbow Balls. Do you really want me to continue bitching about them again? And, okay, anyways. Uh, Yoshi? To be fair, I, I think that... that... Oh, oh. <laughs> um, actually, I'm actually going to have to agree with Sharpwit on his rating. I'm giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Oh, a little change it up, huh? Well, his... Well, the nitpick does actually kind of make sense. I mean, technically what I... I mean, I technically said what I said can't excuse it, but I kind of had to use reference to another show. So I don't know if it technically justifies Rarity's actions or not. 
Mm. So, also I mean, I'll admit what she did. What she did for Rainbow Dash was still a nice thing, but she just allowed her pride to get in the way. So, mm. but to be fair, I mean, it kind of. I mean, to be fair though, Rarity does kind of have a tendency to do that sometimes. Okay. She lets her pride get just like with all the other characters. They let their prides get the best of them, you know, and they end up their judgment ends up becoming clouded. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, what was, so, what was yep. there was something point. I was there was something I was gonna say. I can't remember what it was. So, um, Neon. Well. Since I really don't have any negative about the episode, I'm still going with a 5 of 5. Alright, okay. Uh, let's see, who hasn't gone yet? Uh, Daniel? Lord Betty? Or Bob? Th Thunder? Bad dudes. 5 out of 5? Five. Five of five. Okie dokie. Okay, Bob, you can bring out Daniel back. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Jesus, uh, I'm also about to say, what did it, what did he smoke? <laughs> oh, well, oh, here's something. Did... Oh, oh, here's something I was gonna say. Uh, Daniel put up a good point, actually. At least the okay. Wonder Bolts are more. At least the Wonder Bolts are more useful than the Royal Guard. In right. what way? Debatable, debatable. Well, to be fair, at least they the do one... more than the Royal Guards do. The Wonder Bolts well, at least, at least are not assholes. I like the one. I like the one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shows for people. Here's the deal. Uh, the the guards are not assholes, but the the Wonder Bolts, by being massive assholes, they do move the plot forward. So they did more for the story. Canada, <laughs> 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 I give this episode a four out of five. And, and the streak continues. What's that supposed to mean? You've been, giving, <laughs> you've, been, you've been giving a 4 out of 5 like the past few episodes, dude. Have I? Yeah, you have. Yes. It, it's yeah, not, Rick Mo Dash, use more imagination. It's not Whoa. a criticism. It's not, cannot, it's not a criticism. I just thought it was kind of a coincidence yeah. or pattern. Yeah. Well, it was well, <laughs> it's than what, it, well, it's better than what my initial score was going to be for this episode. That's true. Did you want it to be 20% more cooler? <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> I kind of wanted it to be twenty percent percent less rarity. Wow, I'm sleeping. Oh, sorry, wait, sorry, rarity. All right, my turn. My my turn. Um, actually laugh. You didn't hey, have rarity. to actually leave, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> it the joke all the stronger. Yeah, it does. It made the joke stronger. I'll give you that. <laughs> Anyways. Uh... Anyways, my turn. Um You know, Kanata, you're not the only one who has a streak going on. I'm giving this episode a perfect five out of five. You hypocrite. Five out of five. <laughs> Yeah, hey, I didn't say it was a criticism. I just thought it was a coincidental pattern. I know, I know, I know. But I <laughs> anyways, to... I'm still giving this episode a five out of five. It's one of the biggest highlights of season one for me personally, and it's like, and it's actually the first time that I actually shown appreciation towards Rainbow Dash as a character. So it's it's a good yeah, step. To... It's a good step forward for her. <coughs> yeah, like that's the thing I like this episode. The fact that Rainbow Dash is more three-dimensional, not just cocky, but also vulnerable. But people already mentioned that. Yeah, to de <laughs> we mentioned that to death already. You know, uh, I, it's n now that that uh, Sharp was like, nobody's going to talk about the the Wonder Bolts. I kind of want Sharp to start his own solo podcast where he's like, I'm going to talk about what everybody else forgot to talk about and how salty I am about it. Yeah, <laughs> my, my connection is not good enough to, for such thing. You know, Sharp, that's not even a joke. You should totally do it. Well, you just like I said, my do... connection is not good enough for this. Yeah, okay. you still can do an episode uh, review out of it. All right. Um, okay, so um, overall, our group brain for the episode, and and yes, the some of the people that are absent. Like uh, Casta and Violet already gave out their reigns for the episode. 
Uh, Cassa gave the episode a four and a half out of five, and Violet gave a five out of five. Well, Wish Kit. Wish Kit never announced hers. So, so, uh, by that, by that math, this episode gives a gold loop rating of a four and a half out of five. Yeah. I re- <coughs> it's as high as Rainbow Dash was when she was smoking all of that rainbow powder. Hold on. <laughs> this is, what? Hold on a second. That's like three straight episodes where we gave four and a half out of five. What, the, <laughs> what is going on here? No, well, to be fair, that, we're not doing the episodes I anymore, think so... So you mean we should be more pessimistic and give lower ratings? Okay, we can do that. I'll just change my score. We can do some bad episode. Oh no 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 no! It's not. It's not. I'll change my score to three and a half out of five. If I'll make if I'll make the score change. No 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 no! It's not a big deal. It's 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 just funny how. Or we can cover some bad episodes. For example, how about Brother Dawson? Shop went. Shop went. Sorry. Thank you. We can always just cover where the apple lies, but see, that get a four and a half out of five. <laughs> that venom top, goddammit. He's going to burst at any time. Oy. Okay. That was, it wasn't a criticism. It was just, just... I just thought it was very funny how we all have our own patterns on what ratings to give based on the past uh, three episodes. Good yeah, point. That's all. I, I, it's not a complaint. I just found it kind yeah. of funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Being a good so, yeah. Because. so yeah, this is actually tied for winter wrap up as the highest rated episode of season one t- today, up to this point. But oh, okay. Uh, but okay, and before before we go, I want to provide a special announcement. Okay. As of next week, we'll be moving our podcast to Sundays at 3 p.m. Eastern. And the next episode we're going to cover will be season seven. <laughs> awesome! So look forward to that, guys. Uh, while that episode is still fresh in your heads, I do not look forward to it. <laughs> Let's get really? this Why not? Story. Because uh, because expectations, and uh, I know uh, that the salt will flow in my veins. Oh Jesus! Oh, Jesus. oh my oh, God! Oh, you're guys. not gonna go all Palpatine on us, are you? You know, let the hate flow through you, that sort of thing. What? For Sego Cizento will rule the galaxy. Uh, well, it looks like a certain Pegasus member of the name. Alright, all right, so uh, that'll, that'll be all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I'll see you guys on Sunday afternoon when we talk about the Season 7 premiere. Peace out. Later. See ya. Yo. Make, sure go, make, make sure to go to Bangkok and pick up your pick up the Rainbow Dash burger. Don't taste the rainbow, it's spicy. No. <laughs> make, uh, and, and most importantly, make sure that you go to morcigocinzentodivetart.com to see amazing art. Mm. Yeah. Well, Are you tuning oh. from Tale of Dreams to British Ninja? <sighs> oh, and no. <laughs> <laughs> well, lighting blisters to me. Well, say goodbye to your life. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>